Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I have promised this in the past, so I am delivering on that prom promise, or I'm keeping that promise, you know. I started reviewing the Chanel 255 reissue uh, in my last video, and I told you this is going to be a series of reviews. We have seen so many reviews on YouTube that tell us how big the size of the bag is, what fits inside the bag, what the material of the bag is, what color the hardware is. We know all that already. And we can also check on the Chanel website according to the code, which I will write in the description box down below. You're going to see the code number, uh, the model number uh, of the particular bag. So you can check all that. But what YouTube is lacking are reviews that are a bit more poetic, a bit more alternative. And uh, I have, in fact, already uh, done one review, a classic standard review, uh, over a year ago uh, of the what I call the jumbo size reissue to 55, but with the classic size to 55, Coco Chanel's own size, more or less, um, I have made a review where I read a testimony of a lady whose mother worked for Coco Chanel. So that was a beautiful thing for me to kind of, um, it was beautiful for, for me to read that comment and to be able to share it with you guys while talking about the bag. Today's review of the 255, this is the one we're reviewing, um, triggered was triggered by one of my uh, dear subscribers, uh, Nick. And uh, Nick Solan, um, he particularly commented on the review of this bag, on the video review of this bag, saying that, you know, he hates the chains. It's all about the chains. This video will be about the chains. He does not like these chains. He loves everything else about the bag, so he says, but he does not like these chains. And uh, another one of my subscribers, Melinda. Hi, Melinda. How you doing, sweetie? And how you doing, Nick? Uh, then I asked him, oh, Nick, why do you? Why is that? You know, what about the chain? What about you know? What is the problem? Why why don't you like the the chains? And then um, Nick says, too many chains or links, whatever you want to call it. Too busy. Now, I will photograph like close up details of this chain, and then I'm gonna put them here on the side. So let's just show it as close as we can. This is basically the chain structure of the, in particular, of the reissue 255. Now the 255 is a special bag. Uh, it's one of those rare Chanel bags where the chains do not have intertwined leather. And you could get them in a variety of colors, but the 255 kind of icon classic shape comes, you know, with either gold or silver. Now. What triggered my thought for this particular review, which we're gonna get, which we were, which we are going to get into right now? I'm losing. It's really late while I'm filming, so I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of losing my words here. Um, what triggered this review is the fact that Nick said they are too busy. There's too much going on. Now, to that, I answered with another comment saying, "Thank you so much for this, Nick, because." You have just unveiled another, you've just triggered something in my mind that made me think about another mystery of this bag, another secret about this bag, another very, very special secret about this bag. And that being, this is just my thought, this is not fact, this is just what it inspired me. That's why this review is kind of a poetic review rather than factual or actual <laughs> review. Oh, no, it's an actual review. But Look at, look at the chains in this photo. Now, when Nick said that they're too busy, to me, that uh, unveils another truth about Coco Chanel's life, her, about her own life, about the mystery of her life. If you notice the chains, and I'm going to look at them here, uh, and you're going to look at them there, um, they are very... You have that middle link that's surrounded by the the other links, the other, you know. So the, the middle, the link in the center has a special type of etched or engraved or uh, dented in or pressed in, ornamental kind of, you could say they almost look like floral shapes or abstract, slightly geometric shapes, some reminiscent of leaves some of flowers, they all seem to vary, to be slightly different. That's at the core 
of this chain. And then the sides, the links on the sides and the inner link holding them together, they're flattened, uh, they're more simplified, but they hide that truth in the center. Coco Chanel was very busy, Nick, as you say. She, she would do everything she could to hide the truth, to constantly mask it, to make it different. All the facts surrounding her life were constantly changed. The fact that her father abandoned her turned out to her father being a businessman who left for America to, you know, earn a lot of money and make her life better. That never really was the case. The nuns at Obazine that raised her became her aunts. It was not an orphanage anymore. But she would talk, 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 and cover up any possible questions you might ask. She would make it very busy. Everything surrounding her was very busy, just like this chain. The truth is in there, but it's so distracting, like it distracts you to look at the bag, you know. But the chain itself, also the exterior links, are so distracting that they don't always let you really look inside, find that core truth. Um, what did I write here? The outer links are the protection shield to the truth at the core. The many links keep us busy and never allow us to focus on the truth in the center and at the core. That's what Coco was. Loud, busy, talkative, always fighting to always push your attention away from the truth, away from the core. She was an entertainer in order to hide her truth, just like the chains on her 255 bag. Remember, Chanel started her career singing. She wanted to be a, a chanteuse. Uh, that did not work out for her. Uh, but she nevertheless kept on entertaining to her dying day. It is said that even on the day of her death, on a Sunday uh, in January, while in the Ritz, while she was dying, it is said that she told her assistant helper or maid, you know, her last breath was something like, this is all myth of course, is everything else surrounding Coco Chanel. Allegedly, she was alleged said to have said, um, of course I was going to die on a Sunday, the only day uh, that, you know, nothing works, that we are, we're closed, that we don't work, that the atelier is closed. So she even, you know, took the right moment to pass away when she was not working. And she entertained, even in the last moment of her life. So this chain, to me, really feels that way. And don't forget, this chain was not designed by Karl Lagerfeld. This was made during her life, the design for this chain. The first versions of the 255 bag actually do have um, an added, or you might see on some of them, an added piece of fabric on the back of the chain to make it more comfortable for, comfortable for the shoulders. It wasn't interwoven. Um, in the 60s, more kind of modern versions of the 255 bag had intertwined leather in the chain already. But this is kind of reminiscent of the original. Whether or not this particular um, ornaments in the center link, in the central link, whether or not they're exactly the same as, the, as they were in 1955, I cannot tell you because I haven't had in, in my own hands a 1955-255 bag. But uh, for, from wherever I read and whenever I do my research on it, everywhere I read, uh, about this uh, particular detail, it always states that uh, the actual ornament is the same as it was in the 50s. But until I don't see it, I won't believe it because everything related to Chanel is myth and a lot of, you know, secrets. So, but I like to believe it was that way. A lot of history concerning Chanel and her incredible designs, especially this bag, um, are kind of like a sort of religion, except we have... We don't have to believe that this bag existed when indeed it doesn't exist anymore, but it's only available in books. We actually have it in hand. You can touch it. It does exist. So maybe it's not like a religion, but similar to religion, there's a lot of belief connected to the power uh, of the Chanel brand. So, you know, we choose to believe certain things rather than them actually being reality or not. Um... What Nick commented in one of the comments triggered this thought in me about, you know, Coco's attitude of always entertaining to overshadow the truth at the core. Uh, that really triggered my thought in comparison to this chain. This chain to me is that sort of busy Coco Chanel vibe. Uh, it distracts you. It distracts you. It pulls away your attention towards 
the outer parts of the chain and then you kind of struggle to look into the center and then when you look into the center you notice that each and every single link has a slightly different positioning of the ornaments so beautiful it's incredibly beautiful and detailed and uh, very busy and it's a secret and like everything connected to Chanel this is yet another one of those incredible secrets so let me move back to the center we've seen enough photos I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. This has been one more addition to the special reviews connected to Coco Chanel and her uh, beautiful heritage. The 255 bag is the only bag that the only bag she really ever designed. I mean, there there have been bags designed by Chanel prior to 1955, but the 255 bag, two meaning February, the February 1955 bag is a is a special design. It is so perfect in itself. It doesn't need any alterations, really. It doesn't need to go on some sort of transformative journey. It already is in itself the, the, the best bag ever made. And this is my humble opinion. Um, nothing beats this bag when it comes to design. When it comes to quality, well, that all depends on the quality control happening in the factories at the moment. So you got to be lucky to find the right batch, unfortunately, because in today's day and age, uh, quality is not a given anymore in luxury brands. And the Chanel is affected by that as well as every other luxury brand from Louis Vuitton to Hermès. They're all affected by this uh, big problem at the moment. This big problem being also, uh, you know, contributed to in part by uh, fast fashion brands that kind of just can copy everything and reproduce it within months much quicker than luxury brands can actually produce in their own factories. So it's a big struggle. It's a big challenge. And... Um, uh, on top of that, adding the fact that a lot of these luxury brands wish to expand and grow more and more and more, that doesn't contribute in any positive way uh, to these brands actually being able to uh, give the proper attention to quality control and, and the time needed for production for their luxury goods. If they would stop expanding for a second and stop thinking in terms of, you know, this modern day capitalistic attitude of you got to grow 30% every year, otherwise you're a loser, uh, the bubble's going to burst sooner or later. So you got to actively decide to stop, slow down production, slow it down and, you know, go back to the heritage, go back to the quality, go back to those artisans that they don't have the time to teach their kids or to make so many kids to fill out all the material and product needed to be sold in all of the boutiques worldwide that keep opening up. You know, every year new ones keep opening up. Uh, it's impossible. It's, it's becoming, it's so impossible. And these brands have to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that it's not all about money. You've got to stop thinking about making so much profit now because it's like a chess game. You're going to lose 10 steps ahead. you got to think those steps, 10 steps ahead and maybe you got to go take five steps back today in order to be able to step up 10 steps further tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. I hope you like this review, the special review of the 255 Chanel reissue bag. Uh, more are coming as inspiration flows, as new ideas regarding this mythological creature go, because the more I look at it and the more details I find and the more inspiration points I discover about this bag. So it is incredible for me uh, and I'm so grateful to be able to to have this one and share all of this information with you guys So thank you so much for watching if you haven't already, but do wish to please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube I'm also on Instagram Facebook and Twitter. So guys Keep on digging uh, Scratch underneath that surface look for the truth No matter how busy talkative and entertaining all the noise surrounding us seems to be still focus on that one vital, important thing, and that is never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.